can do this together if we all stand together we can hello uh welcome and thank you to the team at nasrc uh, for all the work you're doing on behalf of better refrigerant management and advocacy on alternatives uh, i really look forward to this opportunity to talk about track ref and how to operationalize compliance because today we're going to talk about a shift in the way that people think about compliance instead of the traditional concept of waiting until compliance periods are over and then gathering relevant information this is about the need taking the needs of compliance and embedding them into your daily operations my name's ted atwood and I began in 1994 as part of the reclaim industry in the U.S., trying to help enact the mandates of the Montreal Protocol. In 2014, after 20 years, we realized that refrigerant leak problems were not getting any better. We sold our reclaim company in order to invest in a new path to help solve the problem. And today, I, along with a bunch of other terrific people here at TrackRef, are using our experience and familiarity with all facets of the supply chain to achieve federal and state compliance requirements, the first step towards reducing leak rates and driving towards net zero emissions. The operational success of your compliance program is one way the Department of Justice evaluates your company's commitment to success. Last year, they published a terrific paper that outlined all of the reasons and responsibilities that they expect to find in compliance programs. If you treat your compliance like a part-time interval-based interval -based project task, excuse me, so will your team. The more frequently you engage the team and share both the goals and needs, the more successful you're going to be. Many companies have a compliance plan, but the question is, is it defensible? Is it a spreadsheet-based data capture process? Does it offer accountability? Do you engage the entire team? Or is it just one person's responsibility? When we talk about a defensible compliance program, we're specifically referencing a plan built to succeed, not just a plan that is written and only known by a small cluster of your group. The discussion today is about how to make that happen. And it's, it's a journey of constant improvement that starts with a very few simple steps. We're gonna go with the crawl, walk, run model because in many cases we see large companies start with a bunch of policy review discussions and some goal setting. And although this is a healthy part of the process, we're gonna leave this until the end where it belongs. TrackRest started with the goal of helping clients reduce their leak rates. And we chose software as the best path to accomplish this because it facilitates interactions and helps guide behavior. Once you have a grip on the basics, then you can engage a proven process that meets both your regulatory needs and the company's ambitions. In the case of TrackRef, we have a specific targeted approach and new clients are up and running within a few days. It's really simple because everything is pre-built, including the role-based access for your team, subcontractor access, specific attribute needs for assets, and all the regulatory requirements are tailored to each type of service. We take the guesswork out of the process so that we can make sure to better support your team. When you get started with TrackRef, there's no need to review regulations and policies because they're built in. You only need to do two things, get a list of assets and provide a list of your team and any third party providers. Although there may be gaps in the data and they might not be perfect, it's better to get started so you don't burn out on policy and concept fatigue. Your team will be seeing your engagement as a sign of commitment and the program will evolve with them and they're gonna feel a lot more a part of it. For 50 years, owners and operators and service providers have been communicating key details about the work being performed by using an invoice. In order to operationalize compliance, you need to go beyond the invoice. Compliance is based on communicating service activity performed on an asset. Leak rates are tied to assets. The invoices don't have a link to assets, so if you're relying on invoices, then you're going to fail in your goal to achieve compliance, because in order to be successful at managing leaks and achieving compliance, you need to focus on the asset, not the service event. TrackRep is asset-centric and ties all events, history, and activity to the asset. 
And since our system has a zip code based logic, the right amount of data is collected based on where the asset's located. Another step beyond feature and track ref is our ability to flag assets as under repair based on the information provided uh, when service people are recording service events. The real-time data capture offers managers and compliance teams an opportunity to engage and be aware of changes to the compli company's compliance profile. Now, at TrackRef, we understand that it's common to have multiple people working on the same unit at different times. Successful engagement by service people is key to success in TrackRef, and for 27 years, we've relied on our familiarity with the work and regulations to guide our development. There's a big difference between a service job where you add refrigerant and a leak inspection. So they should have different questions. And in TrackRef, every task is crafted to accommodate the work. So the workforce is not left guessing which items to fill in or leave blank. This level of detail ensures that your workforce records events the same way, regardless of who is doing the work. Now, the asset register remains the most important starting ingredient, and it will act as a center point of your track ref work environment. And it all starts with the virtual twin, a digital representation of what the physical world has. The more closely this is aligned with the physical world, so the more these look the same, the more closely your team will identify with its success. CMMS data will lack the structure to be valuable, and so can invoices. Now, there are three key compliance issues that can be caused, that are caused by poor digital asset records. The first one is the startup date. This is important because this is when your compliance responsibilities begin. The second one is the refrigerant type. We often see this missing from records when people start. And the last one is the installed capacity, because this will set the trigger rate for your responsibilities. Now, with a solid asset register, you're gonna have the building blocks of good decision-making and you'll be able to execute on governance commitments. But until the quality of your work environment, your digital asset work environment is better than 85%, you're never gonna know the full extent of your risk and compliance vulnerability. Now, the fully engaged stakeholder group tends to produce more effective, passionate, and strategic results. TrackRef provides engagement for everyone on your team because we know they're more likely to plan ahead and take action when new or unforeseen challenges arise. They often can anticipate and fulfill needs before managers make requests. For instance, facilities may have a set budget for maintaining X number of pieces of equipment. However, the leak rate may go a little bit higher than is allowed uh, by sustainability. What may happen in that case is the regulatory and compliance group may be able to access different funds or budgets in order to replace or provide additional maintenance on that unit so that you can get that back under control. Earlier, I suggested we're gonna leave policy reviews until the end, because in many cases, it's hard to set policies when you don't have an actionable plan in place. TrackRef is a rules engine that right out of the box has industry established safe limits in place for every attribute. But an external policy for training is useful as a reference when guiding your vendors and ensuring adherence to expected outcomes. Now inside TrackRef, we have everything from built-in escalation processes to email alerts and even work order validation processes that ensure governance is effective and well communicated. On the screen are a few examples of key policies uh, that should be part of your entire program. You wanna be able to set boundary lines, for instance, on service providers when, when they're expected to enter records. The sooner they enter them, the fresher the data and the better your governance will be. And you wanna make sure you define to outside vendors what consequences they might face if they don't enter records. Regardless of what policies you put in place, in the track rep system, right out of the box, those processes already exist. Now, the road to successful compliance is a journey. And what would a journey be without a few adventures? And whether we're working with large or small grocery chains or convenience stores, it's always a process of the more you learn, the more amazed teams are at the magnitude of the requirements. So we suggest that teams establish early KPIs that are important for them and then change them over time. TrackRef has a full set of business intel reports that can provide insights on compliance issues. 
but it all starts with gathering great data on each transaction and then tying it back to the asset. You might want to track trend line reports or even executive insights, but you'll be able to do that inside TrackRef because it's important when you're managing this process and engaging everyone to communicate performance and challenges at every level. Now, in the word of Pat Riley, there are two options. You're either in or you are. You need to operationalize your commitment to being a regulatory success because it's not enough to have a policy and train on it. You have to actually apply it to the operational tasks and job duties that'll make or break compliance successful. And the domain of those controls, procedures, monitoring, auditing, and using um, track ref are all about having this pre-built on day one so that you're up and running quickly. That's why you don't have to re review the policies to start. Now, just to have a little fun, let's imagine using Zimboxide instead of refrigerants. Sounds a little bit more horrific. And here are two scenarios that play out. The first one's a non-operational one. You do a risk assessment and determine your company uses some unknown amount of Zimboxide. Then you spend 12 months refreshing your chemical safety policy and training programs. You have the safety officer do a tour of all sites and talk about chemical safety. You might even hire Captain Planet, give a keynote at the company's annual research meeting on the importance of handling chemicals correctly. You join some safety groups for benchmarking to keep up with best practices, but you never actually get into the specifics of how people handle Zimboxide. You have a bad asset register, so you figure that since you can't identify the equipment with Zimboxide, it's better to not go there at all. Instead, you keep promoting the policy level stuff and assume operations or facilities will figure out how that applies to handling Zimboxide. And if not, well, you hope they don't call the EPA hotline. The result is you win a bunch of industry awards for your best practices. Workers still routinely mishandle Zimboxide. There's no documentation, but eventually a system leaks too much and the zombie apocalypse happens. A truck rough approach is different. You do a risk assessment. Identify Zimboxide as a controlled chemical used everywhere. You review the existing compliance and chemical safety policy, and you decide it's pretty ugly, but it gives you enough authority to do your job. You table the policy refresh until after you handle the outbreak. Realizing you've had a bad operational policy, but can still identify a few team members who have kept good records, you go and you meet with them. They help you identify more service team members that handle Zimboxide, and they share a list of assets that contain Zimboxide. You use TrackRef as your HVACR compliance platform, and you work with service providers to deploy standardized procedures for handling and disposing of Zimboxide. As a control, you enter all your records into TrackRef, including records from third-party vendors. They come forward to get training when they realize they can't get paid anymore until they enter their records in TrackRef. You train the maintenance workers on how to handle Zimboxide and how to enter those records into TrackRef. You use TrackRef to collect the data on Zimboxide, keep track of where it was used, and that if some leaks, you can get an early jump on the problem, so no zombie outbreaks happen. You enlist an internal audit to do quarterly checks and enter records of Zimboxide usage, and even do some program of periodic advanced leak inspections to avoid the potential of a Zimboxide leak. The end-to-end -end Zimboxide acquisition, usage, storage, and disposal process ensures you know where, when, and how it all leaked so you can get a start on reducing some boxide leaks. The result is you might not get any awards, but the company stays zombie free. Now, as an owner and operator of an HVACR system, any leak of refrigerant is a risk. In the US, we leak more than 600 million pounds of refrigerant annually. The business as usual approach to managing these leaks will lead to a continued leak rate that averages 25% throughout the United States. Supermarkets and convenience stores, stores present a complex infrastructure with a diverse workforce that's expected to conform to a patchwork of regulations. Any one mistake can lead to failure. TrackRef has a perfect track record of helping clients meet their compliance obligations because although we provide the solution through software, we're really a team of committed policy nerds that respect the workforce and a constant need to simplify and streamline the data capture. Along with several other technology partners like Microsoft and Carigo, we provide a seamless operational solution for compliance and sustainability teams of all shapes and sizes. Thanks for taking the time to understand how TrackRef has been successfully operationalizing compliance since 1994. We exist to solve the refrigerant leak challenge. 
Our core mission has always been to help people achieve successful compliance because compliance is a key step towards reducing leak rates. There are many touch points to our work together because when you engage us, you don't just get software, you get a team of committed refrigerant geeks. Our compliance stewardship is only part of our story because our advocacy and activism remain passionately committed to a world where leak rates no longer proliferate and refrigerants remain useful, but in their place. So how's about we talk about those Asian FCs? Just read the facts if you don't believe me. Watch your leakage, disposal, and recycle. It's key, because we can do this together. If we all stand together.